Hello, welcome to this week's video. For those of you who've been watching my channel, you'll know I've had two copyright strikes on my channel for playing Eagles songs. So I'm not doing my full videos at the moment, just in case my channel gets deleted. So I'm just doing these like update videos. So this week I thought I'd do a video on the Steve Vai Masterclass that I went to last night. He did a guitar masterclass put on by Anderton's in Guildford. And as it's only an hour's drive from my house, I thought, I've got to go. I mean, when did you get a bona fide guitar hero playing so close to your house and talking about guitar? I just had to go. So a bit of a disclaimer here, I'm not a real uh, Steve Vai guitar nerd. I mean, if you've seen my channel, you know that's not what the kind of playing I do, but I, uh, I admire him. I think he's really good. I really like his playing. Um, I f was first made aware of him. Somebody went round someone's house and they played me the bit of guitar at the beginning of the David Lee Roth album where he kind of does the talking with the wah, I thought it was the coolest thing I ever heard. And of course the other thing is the Crossroads film, him playing the duel when he plays the devil's guitar player at the end, which I was just at that age where I was learning the guitar and I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, during lockdown I made this uh, silly video of me trying to remember 35 years later whether I could still play that duel from Crossroads. So here's just a little snippet of that. I think I've got the guitar part, so here goes. <laughs> The only other bit of Steve Vai that I've ever learned was um, off a of David Lee Roth album, I think it was called Damn Good off Skyscraper, it was on a 12 string, it was something like this, I can't really remember, trying to wrap the memory banks again. <laughs> song I always remember liking that one but I have to confess I've never actually listened to a solo Steve Vai record which is a bit embarrassing really isn't it but not really my cup of tea by the time I got to uh, slightly older I was like I was really into Van Halen and stuff and then I started listening to Steve Vai and I, I had the first uh, Joe Satriani album Surfing with the Alien there was a Vinnie Moore album I had but I started moving away from that kind of rock shreddy stuff and I was getting more into Steve Ray Vaughan and Hendrix and the country stuff like Albert Lee and Danny Gatton so I never really went down that Steve Vai path but I really admire, I think he's brilliant. So the Masterclass was put on by Anderton's, which is the music shop in Guildford. I've shown myself shopping there in the past on some of my videos, and they managed to fill a thousand seat venue in Guildford. And it was funny, the captain, Captain Anderton came on at the beginning, read the rules out, uh, saying that you weren't allowed to video or photograph, which is why there's no footage on this video, because uh, I abided by the rules. Um, but Steve Vai came out and joked that this was, uh, more people than sometimes he gets at his gigs. The first thing I noticed as Steve I walked out, he was introduced by Captain Anderson, he walked out, he's got the most massive hands I think I've ever seen anyone. They look really out of proportion with the rest of his body. I mean, he's very, uh, very slim, but his hands, I mean, I think his little finger's probably longer than my middle finger. I mean, it was, it's ridiculous. And when he's playing, they're so big, they almost look like they get in the way, but clearly it doesn't. And he must have better do a massive stretch. I mean, I've got quite small hands, but I mean, He's like, like a freak of nature slightly. So he came out on stage and he played two tracks with his band, as he calls it, that he doesn't have to pay as much as his normal band because it's basically it's, um, the tracks on a laptop. And I have to mention a slight negative here because it wouldn't be fair to uh, not mention it on this review. The sound where I was sitting wasn't particularly good. I was sat, I managed to get a ticket in the second row and I was over to um, sort of the, I was over to the left, so stage right, um, nearest that end. And the backing track was coming out of the PA speaker in front of me. Um, but the guitar didn't seem to be in the PA at all. I could hear it coming out of his amp on stage and it wasn't pointing towards me. Now I only know this because and I'll come on to this later when the other amp on stage was being used. I could hear that really clearly because it was pointing kind of at me. But where I was sitting, I had the backing track there and I couldn't hear the guitar all that well, which was a bit disappointing as it was a guitar masterclass. I'm mentioning this because constructive criticism I suspect the sound man was in the middle and it sounded fantastic there because um, the guitar amp was shooting straight at him but he should have put a bit of the guitar in the PA because I couldn't really hear what Steve I was playing a lot of the time where I was sitting which is a bit of a major flaw on the guitar masterclass that being said from what I could hear I was able to sort of cut my ears to get a bit of the treble and watching his fingers I mean he's a real virtuoso I mean it's fantastic playing you know, it's not my cup of tea but I can't fault it, it's fantastic. So he plays a couple of songs and then he starts taking questions from the crowd. Um, and he's a brilliant speaker, very entertaining, very funny. Um, a real 
raconteur, if that's the right word, he's, uh, he's fantastic. And I, I suspect, you know, a lot of the stuff he was saying, you probably get asked very similar questions, but it, it was great. And um, the first question was, it was kind of along the lines of how does he kind of judge his own performance? How does he gauge it? Does he struggle in certain times? And he talked about, he, he kind of judges it by being in the moment. And this really struck with me. I, I quite naturally, without thinking about it, I get caught in the moment when I'm soloing. I'm completely involved in it. Um, I mean, when I was at school, I played in front of my music teacher, who was very much a classical music teacher, and I did a Jimi Hendrix thing as one of my exams. At the end, of it, I was obviously really getting into it. And at the end of it, I kind of looked up and he looked at me like, that was frightening. I thought, what? But that's probably what it was. I was just completely focused. And last week I had this thing where I went to a level that I'd never gone to before. I, I completely was in the moment. I, I just felt like my fingers could do anything. And in fact, I videoed it all and I could see the bit where it happened. I closed my eyes and I'm just going to show you this little bit where it happened. It might not sound that different to anyone else, but I had this thing where I was far more in the moment than I've ever felt before while I was playing. It's almost like my technique is driving itself like a driver driverless car it's working on its own and I'm just there I've kind of put in the destination is that a good analogy anyway this was a little clip plus playing the sort of hip clap to anything <laughs> interesting Steve I talking about this he says that's how he, he tried and he sort of gave exercises of how you can concentrate on yourself and um, just be at one with the moment and he a very good point um, he had some other sort of uh, he was asked some other great questions about um, collaborating um, weren't many really many gear questions but um, sort of talking about playing and stuff and it was really interesting I mean he, he talked about an hour and a half then he played another song and then Right towards the end, he got five members of the audience up to have a jam with him, which is great. All these people put their hand up. I didn't. I mean, <laughs> they were very brave doing this. And these five guys, two or three of them had their Steve Vai guitars over the handling at the gym things. A couple, one guy borrowed a guitar and a couple of other guys, I can't remember exactly what they all had. We're obviously big Steve Vai fans. It was brilliant. It was, it was so entertaining watching them because they, they got up and they were uh, clearly, this is their hero. This is the moment they've been practicing for all their lives. They're standing on stage with a hero, jamming, trading licks with him. And you could see this mixture of fear and kind of anticipation and not wanting to bugger up this moment that they've been waiting for all their life. And they were all brilliant. It was so good. They just, they all played really well. I mean, there's a couple of them stuttered a bit to start with, kind of like rabbit in the headlights, but they all played brilliant. It, it was I really enjoyed that part of the evening. I had a big smile on my face with the whole thing because it was just the looks on their faces you were kind of feeling for them. And I admire them for doing it. I don't think I could have done it, standing up with your hero and trading licks in front of all those people, not knowing you were going to do it. Well, some of them might have known because I did wonder when I walked in, I've never been to one of these kind of uh, guitar master class before. All these people with guitars, I thought, what are they bringing a guitar for? Now I know. So then the jammers left the stage and he gave the audience a choice of three tunes that he was going to finish with and he finished with this tune and I mean brilliant brilliant playing I mean it's you know it's technical facility but he, I mean he did mention actually early on that how there's a lot of modern guitarists that play stuff you know even more ridiculous than he can play how it's a, he said he's he's watched three or four generations of guitar players and he, he's uh, like pol prolific I can't remember what they're called but he's guested on one of their tunes and uh, he was saying how, you know, frightening their technique is. So to finish the evening, they, uh, Anderson's and Steve, they gave away two of his signature guitars. Two very lucky people got out of the audience and uh, got these guitars and then they signed them. And then 100 people had paid for the VIP thing to meet him and have a photo with him. Um, I didn't. I, I probably would have done if I'd seen it. I didn't. But anyway, um, I then left. And it was great. I have to say, if you get a chance to go to one of Steve Vai's masterclasses, it's brilliant. Bonafide, proper guitar hero from when guitar heroes were guitar heroes from the 80s with the hair and everything. I mean, you don't get those guitar heroes anymore, do you? So I have to say, this is the third masterclass I've been to uh, through Anderson's. The first one I went to was Robin Ford. And I have to say, that was a bit disappointing. He did have his Dumble with him, which... Um, I can't remember who introduced him, whether it was Captain Anderson, some people came and said, I expect there's some people who are more excited to see the amp than they were him. Well, by the end of it, yes, I was more excited to see the amp. He 
clearly wasn't as used to doing the uh, master classes as Steve Vai clearly is, and the other person I've seen, which is Larry Carlton. But Robin Ford, he, he made a bit of a mistake near the beginning saying he didn't like people asking him about gear when he'd just done a gig. And it made it sound like he didn't want anyone to ask him any questions about gear and technique on this guitar master class, which I know wasn't what he meant. He meant when he's doing a concert, people come up and, oh, what's that? What's your settings on your amp? He was uh, sort of saying he doesn't enjoy that. He wasn't saying he didn't want people to ask it on this masterclass, but as a result, nobody asked him. Then people started asking him about songwriting and he started strumming songs that he'd written and he couldn't remember the key and he was trying to sing it. And he only did a tiny bit of playing at the beginning. It wasn't great, to be honest. The second one I went to was Larry Carlton and that was absolutely fantastic. He, like Steve Wright, obviously does these things all the time. He really knew what he was doing. He had backing tracks for all his famous solos. He had all these brilliant stories about Joe Pass and... Um, all the stories about Steely Dan, it was absolutely fantastic. So I'm definitely going to go again when I see these uh, players that I like. Um, Anderson's put these things on really well. It's a uh, very good company. You probably watch their videos. I watch their videos. They're, they're brilliant. Um, and I often go to their shops. It's only an hour's drive from my house. Thank you very much for watching. I'm still here despite my two copyright strikes. I think I've got about 70 days until my... Uh, name gets cleared so I'm hanging in here hoping that I don't get any more strikes I've deleted any videos that I think might cause me a problem I'm going to leave you with this video of my uh, attempt to play the Crossroads solo um, it is on my channel the other the full video if you want to find it I'm going to leave you most of it here so thank you very much for watching I hope I'm still going to be here next week if I am I'll see you then I think I've got the guitar part so here goes fingers crossed <laughs> Well, I guess as I've got it like that, let's try it some other way. Um, here we go. How about this? Let's try this. So there we go, practice makes perfect, glad I put the work in.